Uh, I'm Jay Jasnoff, and I'd like to welcome you uh, to this year's Joshua and Verona Watmo Lecture in Linguistics. This is the eighth Watmo Lecture. As some of you know, we owe these events to the generosity of the Watmo family, and especially uh, of the late Mrs. Verona Taylor Watmo. Um, Joshua Watmo was born and educated in England. He came to Harvard in 1926 and taught here without interruption from then until his retirement in 1963, which was, of course, exactly 50 years ago. Near the midpoint of that period, he became the founding chair of the Department of Linguistics, which was known for the first 10 years of its existence as the Department of Comparative Philology. It had only been the Department of Linguistics for 10 years when I took my first linguistics course from Professor Watmo, Linguistics 100, which was called simply Language. The name Department of Comparative Philology reflected the fact that Watmo started out as a classicist. As a scholar, he branched out from his original specialty, Latin epigraphy, to the other languages of ancient Italy and eventually to the languages of ancient Gaul. These interests are reflected in his books, first the foundations of Roman Italy, much later in his career the dialects of ancient Gaul. Beginning in the late 1940s, he became increasingly interested in general linguistics and especially in the use of information theory and other mathematical methods as an aid to the study of language. The focus of his later work is reflected in his 1955 book called Language, a Modern Synthesis. Uh, Joshua Watmo died in 1964 in the first year of his retirement. He was survived by his wife, Verona, to whose generosity we, uh, excuse me, we owe these lectures, by their children, Jeremy Watmo and the late Theodora Watmo Green, and by their grandchildren. Jeremy Watmo is with us today as our Fred Green, the original Watmo couple's son-in-law, and two Watmo grandchildren, Phil and Alan Green. As always, it's very nice to see you folks here again. We're now going to move to the more academically focused part of today's proceedings, but before we do, I have two announcements. One is that after the lecture and question period, there'll be a reception on the first floor of the Harvard Faculty Club, which is a three-minute walk away on Quincy Street. Everyone here is welcome there. The second announcement is that we were short of handouts at the beginning, but more handouts are on the way and will be coming. Uh, if you need one, you'll get it. Um, and now it's time for us to introduce our distinguished prof uh, speaker, Professor Bruce Hayes. And for that purpose, I'd like to call on my colleague, Kevin Ryan, to introduce him. So Kevin, it's up to you. It's my great honor to introduce Bruce Hayes, distinguished with a capital D professor of linguistics at UCLA. Uh, Bruce actually went to college here at Harvard, where he concentrated in linguistics and applied mathematics. He then went on to MIT for his PhD, and after one year at Yale, spent the rest of his career as a professor at UCLA, quickly rising through the ranks. So quickly, I just learned that he received tenure uh, in less than 10 years after he received his bachelor's degree. Um, so I think everyone would ag agree that he's one of the most influential and respected phonologists in the field today. Um, and his influence extends beyond core phonology to the phonetics phonology interface, uh, the morphology phonology interface, poetic meter, acquisition and computational learnability, prosodic phonology and intonation, and especially in the last decade, he's gotten into gradients and variation in generative grammar, not just its descriptive correlates, but really bringing variation into mainstream theoretical linguistics. So it's a bit difficult to know where to begin, but I'd like to highlight just a few accomplishments of his which I think are representative. For starters, his 1995 book, Metrical Stress Theory, Principles and Case Studies, is, I believe, the third most cited book in the history of phonology, um, after only the sound pattern of English and optimality theory. Aside from its theoretical contributions, such as the iambic trochaic law, the book featured analyses of over 150 languages. 
and is regarded as a model of typology. And much of this research was done across the way at Widener Library. The next two items are some more recent accolades that I can pick from uh, two of the top journals in our field, uh, Language and Linguistic Inquiry. Just this year, the journal Language awarded Bruce the 2012 Best Paper Award for his article, Max and Grammars for the Metrics of Shakespeare and Milton, co-authored with uh, Colin Wilson and Ann Shisko. Uh, and this next one Bruce probably doesn't know about, but according to Google Scholar's citation data compiled from the last five years, uh, his 2008 linguistic inquiry article, A Maximum Entropy Model of Phonotactics and Phonotactic Learning, co-authored with Colin Wilson, is the most cited article from that journal in that five-year time period. And that includes all the syntax articles. Fourth, from what I could determine on Amazon, his 2008 textbook, uh, Introductory Phonology, is currently the best-selling undergraduate text for phonology. And finally, he's co-creator of the two most popular software packages for phonological analysis, OTSoft and the Maxent Grammar tool. So I picked these five examples to illustrate scope. Bruce has impacted the field not just theoretically, but also methodologically, technologically, and pedagogically. And I think you'll experience this range today when his, his not to put you on the spot, but the, the, the talk will range from empirical to theoretical to experimental to computational. Um, on a, a more personal note, I, Bruce was my advisor up until a couple of years ago when I came to Harvard, and I understand that uh, some of Bruce's first exposure to linguistics here at Harvard was th through Jay and others. So it's, it, this is really a, a full kind of circle between Jay and I. We have both uh, ends of your career so far covered. and. Um, so it's really an honor to have Bruce here, and I'll let him speak. Thank you.